again and Greg DeFace. That's the shot he's been looking for. Oh, something to start the crowd moving here. Over pitch ball and quite delightfully put away through the offside by Greg. Intended, but it will race away down to that far uh, third man boundary for four runs. So the applause not only for the boundary, but for the 50 partnership between these two. And that's flighted. And the first time he had a change of heart, tossed one up, very, very nearly got that through. Uh, beat everything, beat uh, Rod Marsh as well. And uh, the thing that's mystifying Rod Marsh, I think, is how it missed the, missed the wickets. One of those where the uh, wicketkeeper gives it up. He tossed this a good deal higher. It was made into a Yorker. Twenty-three to Tony Gregg and ninety-nine to Woolmer. And Bright's figures one for 52 in those 26 overs, eight of which have been maidens. In the air, safe and four runs, and that is Bob Wilmer's century. He goes to 103. A splendid performance. The last Englishman to hit centuries in successive innings against Australia was Ken Barrington back in 1965-6. And Woolmer has now hit his third hundred in Test cricket, all of them against Australia. And it came up in 276 minutes with 15 boundaries. It's in the air, and it's almost six. Kerry O'Keefe didn't see it. It often happens down that uh, side of the ground. It wasn't all that far away from him. Thompson again, and Belly Hammock, who made off there by Tony Gregg. Every ounce of his physique going into that, and fairly crushing it through mid-off. Thompson, look of thunder on his face there. And uh, Greg Chappell and Rodney Marsh in the previous over a little annoyed with Warmer playing and missing. But, uh, those sort of frustrations creep into the game too much they could uh, lift this game well and truly out of their hands it's uh, slipping away from them at the moment they can't afford to, to let it slip any further on a really hostile delivery Marsh is taking it up and clamoring for a catch he's absolutely disgusted that Tom Spencer has nothing at all to do with it look at the expression there on his face Well, that was a really vicious delivery. The only man who moved up there is Tom Spencer. A little uh, hard there, but uh, all the histrionics and the business coming out here, it was a really vicious delivery that climbed. And uh, Marsh, they're absolutely certain that that deflection came off the bat. So it could be that uh, Tony Gregg might have got away with something there. a lovely shot so that great off drive repeated again by Tony Gregg brings together this uh, 100 partnership so exactly 100 added by these two the stand of 100 is taken 2 hours and 23 minutes An interesting ploy that worked out beforehand by a keeper and bowler, but it uh, brought four runs to Bob Woolmer. His 16th four, and prior to that delivery, Rod Marsh had taken up a position some two yards wide down the leg side. See, he's uh, moved right the way over there. And it's 
say that he was looking for a deflection there. Greg Chappell rolling that outside leg stump. That's another lovely shot. And it's been a two. So a little bit of uh, rugged Australian feeling at the moment. Ron Pasco, the substitute out there, allowing that to slip through for another four. That's the short one again, the one bad ball, and this is a wicket where you can't afford to drop anything the least bit short. Warmer making the most of it, clips in through mid-wicket for another very good four. And again, the sun breaking through here. Like the uh, clouds we've had all morning beginning to break now. We've been promised a, a bright sunny afternoon and uh, looks very much as though we could get one. A little driving practice there for Wilma. Very pleasant half volley stroked effortlessly away again to extra cover. So another boundary to Wilma, which takes him to his best score of the season today. 122 is top score prior to this test match starting. It's a great shot. Lovely, delicate touch. Just easing the ball away behind point. No chance of Pasco cutting that out, and it's the first score of the second session. And Bob Woolmer getting that away wide of Lenny Pasco. We can have a look at that stroke again. It was uh, a classic textbook back cut. The bat just angled nicely, and no chance of uh, the man at back with point cutting it off. There it is, it's away from Gully, it's four runs, and Greg picks up his 50. Not too much applause there from uh, Tomo. And Nice has got his hands together. So to the skipper, Greg Chappell. Muted applause, I think, is possibly way to phrase it just a flashback to what we were saying earlier that uh, it seemed clear that Tony Greg did get an edge to that ball from Jeff Thompson earlier but a desperately difficult decision for Tom Spencer because Greg's body was shielding the stroke it's in the air but it's quite safe and it's away down the ground over deep mid off Just reaching the ropes before Lenny Pasco is able to cut it off. Four runs. Tony Greg has gone on to 57. That is the lead. Here's how England took the lead in this match. Greg didn't quite time it, but he hit the way over mid-off, and the 300 is up as well. 300 for three, and that's a most impressive-looking scoreboard compared to 297 all out. Six. Marvellous hit that. That cleared the boundary ropes by oh, the length of the pitch and another ten yards. A great hit from Tony Gregg. Take him into the 60s. That was a, a very cleanly struck ball. Right off the centre of the bat. 307 for three. That's just beaten the keep, and it's certainly beaten the man out at uh, mid-off. That's a good lusty blow from Greg. Uh, tactically, England have got it just about right. They've got through the first session without losing a wicket. And uh, they've got through the, the opening part of the second session. And the instructions from Brearley, I would reckon, uh, were to Greg, who's the big hitter of the pair. Give it a go once you get your eye in after lunch safe four runs again and that shout you heard was from max walker don't know that it was anything very complimentary to uh, bob Woolmer or uh, even to the heavens above 150 stand now and 
he's picked up four runs again from the outside edge. Thirty-nine overs, eleven maidens, one for one hundred. And that's it, I would think. Yes, is out this time. A very definite uh, bat onto pad there, and a dolly catch to short leg. So, the congratulations going to Kerry O'Keefe. The end of a that's a lovely shot again by Greg. A little late on it, and uh, able as a result to put it square. Defeating a couple of points left hand. That short and got the sort of treatment it deserved. And not waiting for it, crushing it away through the big uh, vacant gaps on the onside. Second boundary to Alan Knoxville, across the bowling of the Keiths, and he moves on to nine. Alan Knox quick to see the Google there, and as a wicketkeeper showed nicely into position. And, uh, Gets himself another boundary. Short again. So three bad balls there from Kerry O'Keefe. And as we've said consistently here all day, this is no wicket on which to pitch the ball short. And particularly to a player like Alan Knott. Tony Gregg must be out, and it's a brilliant catch. So, Max Walker had to do it himself. And what a fine catch that was. Tony Gregg caught and bowled, caught and bowled by Max Walker for 76. Five out now for 348. And it took a brilliant effort off his own bat, as you might say, by Max Walker to see the end of Tony Gregg. Ball wasn't in the air very long. Following through, snapped it up in really masterly fashion. Well, that ends another good, sound, solid performance from Tony Gregg. And the crowd here at Old Trafford rising to greet him. So he might have had a bit of luck in his innings here today. But... Uh, well worth a repeat of that fine catch by Max Walker. Disappointed Greg uh, turns away. And those runs will be welcome for Jeff Miller. Always nice to get off the mark. And those his first runs against Australia in Test match cricket. So we'll bring up the 350. 350, the score now of England. Five men out. And those runs have come up in the 127th over. In the air, Ronnie Marsh and Thompson has got a wicket for the bouncer. Miller the man out for six. Court Marsh, Paul Thompson. It was uh, a similar type of stroke to the one that removed O'Keefe. Neither of these two players uh, particularly good hookers. And you can see that Miller is never really getting himself into position there. The ball's cramping him. And it comes off the splice. Up in the air. And Rodney Marsh just comes forward smoothly to take the catch. to think of something different. 
He's all right chasing that, the ball going in speed, and he's never going to cut it off. So, Alton Mott there has uh, tried one or two off drives. He hasn't been able to find the gap on that side, so he brings out the old-fashioned Sunday afternoon mow. Thompson, again to old. And again, outside off stump. We've got about 40 minutes and there's still the score. I think Godfrey Evans in tests in Australia once lost it for an hour and a half. <laughs> and these are not uh, these are not action replays you're watching. It's quite incredible that uh, identical delivery has floated past the outside edge of Chris Hole's bat on I think at least 14 occasions now. He's caught it. Well Thompson collects a wicket. Caught at third man would you believe? And that's a fairly unusual dismissal. One doesn't see that too often in a test match. Alan not looking for the square cut. A little bit of extra bounce there from Thompson, and it floated away, the wind helping it, of course, and ended up with Kerry O'Keefe down at the third man. So a fairly remarkable dismissal that Alan not the seventh man out for England, score on 377, and he goes for 39. So this is the way he went. Right underneath it. And that ball carrying all the way down to Kerry O'Keefe. Good batting very well at the moment. McCoska very much out of form and lacking in confidence. But uh, what they had to do is get their heads down and uh, fight hard and fight hard all day today and tomorrow. It's uh, just a question of uh, how well they could do it and how well Greg Chappell could hold them together. Here's Bob Willis bowling the first over of the Australian second innings and Rick McCoska is the batsman. Oh, it's in the air and it's got to be out. Derek Underwood. And that is absolute rock bottom for Rick McCosker. A very, very weak hook stroke. No wonder he looks disappointed because that is exactly what the Australians didn't want to happen. McCosker has made two and naught. And Australia are naught for the loss of McCosker's wicket. Good delivery that before runs. Quick outside edge and uh, Chapel managed to keep it down. Bounced well in front of uh, the gullies. Didn't quite get that. Just uh, came off uh, the top edge. Pulling it away in front of square leg. Another the fieldsman, a man who will be doing quite a bit of bowling in his second innings. And that was a good ball. That came back off the pitch. amount of movement uh, in that last delivery here from Bob Willis. Came back uh, quite appreciably. Well, there it is. He's gone for the hook. Is it going over the top? Well, it's six runs. It didn't miss by very much. There's a grin there from Bob Willis, but it was a magnificent shot there from Greg Chappell, clearing John Lever way out there on the deep long leg boundary. There's the expected bouncer. And Chapel swinging away from it, getting right underneath it and clearing Lever there on the boundary. And here he comes again to Davis. 
And that's short, that's hooked down in the air, Levers under it. And he's a very safe fair hand, so Ian Davies in turn, falling for the bouncer. Beautifully caught down at the deep long leg by John Davies, by John Lever. So the usual scenes now when anybody takes a catch in a test match, everybody races up to congratulate them. It was a fairly simple catch. All needed was a little bit of judgment, and Lever made no mistake. So the second wicket goes down at 30. And Ian Davies fall in like his partner Makoska for the bouncer. He middled it much better, but uh, must have been aware that there was a man down there waiting for it. And Lever judging it perfectly. Good shot. Four runs. No problem there about any spin. The half volley, pitch leg and middle. And put away again very positively by Greg Chapel. Well, that's flighted. And it's gone through again. Really should have been picked up there by Amos. So a lapse in the field means two successive boundaries to Greg Chapel the bowler to suffer and he's got through three overs now for 11 runs Sergeant uh, off the mark with that four got a nice crisp stroke away through the mid on area and uh, quite a time to Get off the mark. He came in at 12:33. It's just on one o'clock now. That's a fine shot. And uh, once again, the misfield. John Lever just able to get the hand to it. Almost looked as though he misjudged his dive, and in the end uh, may not have needed to dive. Perhaps could have got. Uh, to the ball by standing up and going at it with his right hand. That's a nice stroke. That really is a, a very, very good piece of batting from Greg Chappell. He's forcing Underwood away on the onside, which is not all that easy. off the bat there doesn't look to be all that authentic a stroke good shot <laughs> we don't see too many better shots than that uh, today not even from Greg Chappell it wasn't a bad ball more of a short arm jab and he timed it perfectly in fact, uh, right up off the ground. Shot, but it uh, may not go for four. Levers coming around very fast, but not fast enough. Sixty-seven behind. Eight wickets in hand. It's Greg Chapel. No question that he's the class player in the side. Oh, what a good catch. What a lovely reflex action. A splendid piece of cricket there by Bob Woolmer. To dismiss Craig Sargent for eight. It's 74 for three with Greg Chapel on 46. Sargent is out. Court Woolmer bowled Underwood. And those are the most difficult catches of all. Just watch Woolmer's hands. He has to follow the ball. It's clipped quite firmly by Sargent. Turned. And he's held it beautifully. It didn't even 
half bounce out. I think I'd be very much inclined to uh, bring an extra man into that uh, gully area there. So Walters early in the innings, that's the spot where particularly someone like Chris Old, who moves the ball off the seam and can bowl a good leg cutter, that's the spot uh, where you need the man alongside Bob Willis, who is out at gully. And that's the exact spot we're talking about. Just inside Bob Willis. Well, I think uh, one can honestly say that uh, one's not being wise after the event there. It's a good shot. That's his 50. It'll take him from 48 to 52. A really good stroke. He rolled his wrists over the top of that. My word, that's a good innings. 52 out of 84 for three in a critical situation for Australia. And generous applause from all the England players and the crowd here, recognising a, a real touch of talent. Good shot. That should beat Randall. Even Randall is going to be battling to cut that off. Fast though he is across the outfield. It's a good shot from Waters. The situation is trader 140 behind. Now uh, 48. The deficit. Seven wickets in hand. Tony Gregg. Very much the attacking bowler rather than defensive and pretty good partnership breaker as well. We'll be bowling to Doug Walters. Walters on 10. Great Chapel 54. Oh, that's close. That must be out. And Greg has done it again. Brought on for the last over before lunch by Mike Brearley. He's trapped Walters LBW with one that snaked back very sharply. A really good delivery that. Walters LBW Greg for 10 and it's 92 for 4. And that's the dismissal. Pitching outside off stump. Hitting Walters on the knee. And it was only his knee that stopped it hitting middle stump three quarter way up. That's a lovely shot. Feet again into position quickly and perfectly, quick through mid wicket. So we turn for the third run, three runs to Greg Chappell, bringing up the three figure score for Australia. 102 now for four. And in view of the fact that they've lost four wickets, it's come in very good time, just 113 minutes for the first hundred. Oh, that's a tremendous bouncer. As good a bounce as I've seen here for a long time. It's a good piece of bowling here by Bob Willis. He's been tending to concentrate mainly around Greg Chappell's off stump and hasn't bowled the bouncer for some time. On that occasion, you saw that uh, it appeared to be heading over the left shoulder and then cut back virtually straight towards Greg Chappell's head. An intelligent piece of bowling by Willis. It's hooked and a good hook. Chappell got into position, hooked it down, never any danger of the catch there around the corner. Unusual. It looked as though Greg Chappell was bowled. Whether or not he changed his stroke is uh, another matter. There's Jag back on from the inside edge. Ah, that's a nice shot.
good shot. <laughs> Set uh, three or four goes this over to pierce that field, ranging from an area wide of mid on through to extra cover. That's the first time he's managed it. And that's out. That's out. Well bowled by Miller. He threw it up, gave it a bit more air. Spun it out of the rough stuff. I won't say there's anything wrong with Hook's shot. He was across to the ball. Just didn't quite cover it. It was a good piece of bowling rather than uh, an indifferent stroke. And it's the fifth wicket down. Plenty of air there. Hooks goes to it. He played it just right. And it went straight to Brealey at slip. So Hooks is out. Caught Brealey by Miller. For 28, it's 146 for five. And he's out. Oh, yes, he's out. Second third attempt though by Rangel, Sarver Lee flops to the ground, Rodney Marsh, really not a very good shot from such a seasoned campaigner. Tries to smear Underwood over mid on and succeeds only in reaching Rangel. But a uh, few heartaches there for England. Eric Rangel, normally such a very safe field, only managing to grab it at the third attempt. So that's surely curtains for Australia with a day and a half to go, Rodney Marsh out. But just a single, the score on one, 47 for six. There he goes, trying to uh, clear mid on. Randall, in his terms, a very simple catch. One, two, three attempts before he gets it. And the relief. Nice reply to the tight and court and goal held that bright goes without scoring. This Australian collapse, collapse continues. It's the second wicket in this over for Derek Underwood. 147 for seven. Ray Bright, court and bold, Underwood North. And again, this one held back, given a little bit more air, inducing the false shot. And Underwood taking it low down. Give himself room, clobbered that off the back foot, and that's going to beat everybody. That's another lovely shot. Uh, identical to the one the previous over. Such a deep square leg, the whole England team now in a position to save a single. No chance of stopping that. That's a beautiful shot. Wasn't all that short. And rocked away on the back foot and cracked it square on the offside. Lovely shot from. And Chapel takes him into the 90s. It's a great shot. Great shot. There's a low ball called. And the poor signal. Bob Willis now. And here's Greg Chapel. And there it is. A super shot. And a super innings. What a nice way to bring up a hundred with a vintage stroke. Copybook stuff and the pavilion rising to Greg Chapel. 102 out of 188 for seven. Captain Jennings is uh, a cliche, but what a great performance this is. And he's bowled him. What the breakthrough. 
A delighted Underwood. Great chuckle, giving himself a little bit of room, trying to force it through the offside. Slide error of judgment on the captain's behalf, and he goes for a brilliant 112. So the crowd immediately rise into him because they can't have been too many better innings than this in a test match under these sort of circumstances here at Old Trafford. Totally held his sight together all the way through the morning and afternoon. And he's eighth man out, score on 202. He hit 1-6, gorgeous hook shot, and another 15 boundaries in an innings which everybody here will remember for a very long time. Still on 17. That's edged. Does it? Did it see there when Willis fell over whether that ball did in fact carry or not, carry or not to him? Might just have dropped short, but he found the outside edge for no real reason. Nothing much happened to the ball. And it looked as though it might have just pitched in front of him. to Walker. It's a fine shot. <laughs> and that's, I think, exactly what happened when these two were in conflict earlier on. In that case, it was Walker the bowler and Greg the batsman. The ball slipped out of Max Walker's hand. It's a repeat then here from Tony Gregg. That, I think, was a button pad, yes. This time the finger goes up. No doubt there. There were two very definite clicks. Gregg holds the bat high. Underwood takes another wicket, his fifth of the innings. And Walker goes. Caught Gregg, bowled Underwood for six. Nine men out for 212. Little doubt at all there. Ball being edged onto the pad by Walker. Two clicks and the long form of Tony Gregg stretching forward, snatching it up inches from the ground. That was the attempted bouncer and uh, good repost from Kerry O'Keefe. The ball kept pretty low and He's just having a little chuckle there because uh, he was still going for the shot, even uh, had it been a bouncer at shoulder height. He had to get down quite low, got it away well behind square. Then at uh, deep mid wicket, Randall going back quite a bit deeper now. And he's the man who's coming around for it. Perfectly placed. A nice piece of captaincy from Brearley. He pushed him back 20 yards. Underwood bowled it perfectly. And Randall took the catch that ends the innings. Thompson didn't see the man go back and fell for the trap. 218 all out Australia. And it's 79 to win for England in the second test match here at Old Trafford. With Derek Underwood taking 6 for 66 in... 32.4 overs and 13 maidens. Glorious, magnificent, flawless. You can throw in any superlative you like.